From age 16 on, I wanted to be a winemaker. In those days, you said, if you didn't go to Davis, couldn't be a winemaker. That was the only way you had to learn technical winemaking. I was really bad at science, particularly chemistry and biology. And I realized that I'd never make it through Davis. I'd flunk out. Then I said, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I don't have to do modern winemaking. I can look backwards to 19th century techniques. That I can do. Good evening. I'm Jim Cochran, your host for the California History Programs. Tonight we have a very interesting bit of recent history, not electronics, but the formation of the Ridge Winery by three families. Dave Benyon and Charles Rosen and Hugh Crane, the three founding partners. They were all at Stanford Research Institute back in the 50s, and I think the involvement with Ridge from the beginning gave another dimension um, to that life. You're becoming involved not just with what the earth produces, but then a particular product that by a natural process can be made into, transformed into something far more complex. In one way or another, that whole uh, connection is what intrigued them, and it provided another side to their lives that their jobs in technology did not necessarily provide. Three men, I call it the triumvirate. Each man had a respect for each other. Dave was the earthy one, deep and rich. Intrinsically, he was a farmer. Charlie was a person who did not want to waste anything. I mean, he was just a very practical man. And Huey, my husband, was the glue that held them together. Well, everyone knew in the in late 1950s that if you didn't get a piece of land, there'd be none left. Right? <laughs> so we were wandering the hills, and uh, it's Charlie found the place particularly, but then it turned out that this very place that he had located, Fran and Dave had looked at and met the owner two or three or four years earlier. We didn't buy Ridge. We bought a beautiful piece of land. Nothing more, nothing less. And it happened to have a vineyard on it. And we did the same thing with that vineyard that had been done for many years before. Mr. Jamello made the wine from the grapes on this land. And if it weren't for Dave Benyon, who was interested in going one step further, that he would say, let's take some of those grapes home ourselves. We brought those boxes down to our house in Barron Park, and we made wine in our carport. It was a wonderful feeling. The grapes are still warm, and you can feel the grapes, but you feel the stems between your toes. That was the first time I remember making wine. Now we have 80 acres, and there's nobody to run. There's no one who comes up here. The families came up, picked the grapes, crushed them, and put them in the tank for fermentation. So we made uh, uh, gratings of old redwood and blocked them down in the top of the fermentation tank to hold the cap down for the whole week. And so we still use that submerged cap fermentation today. At the end of Stanford, I gave up the whole idea of making wine. I had been working in foreign affairs down in Chile. And after about six months, we realized, you know, here's, here's this country producing a tremendous amount of wine, and they're exporting 2%. And here was finally the chance to do what I'd always wanted to do, which was traditional winemaking. Very straightforward. Very simple. It was just a wonderful education. It started by chance. We'd made a little wine. Other people told us it was good wine, the grapes were good. And we made one decision after another. And each time we made a decision, we suckered ourselves into not going back. And everyone here gets in and gets their hands and feet dirty. And you can't imagine how many uh, tubs of crushed grape juice have been dumped by hand. Well, the kids too, really getting into it when it had to be done that way, dragging the hoses, 
cleaning up the messes afterwards and so on. We raised our kids up here weekends, actually, too. We slept on the top of the hill every vintage. We come up sometimes late Friday, sleep over, start to work early Saturday morning. Every night we would go to sleep, you'd have a million stars above you and you see the million lights of the city. And then every morning, because the fog would come in and we were, you know, a couple hundred feet above the fog level, that, you know, you, the city had disappeared and it was just brilliant white clouds. It was just incredible to sleep out here. Each place has a memory because this is our childhood. If friends come in from out of town, this is where we want to bring them because this is us. Our parents were pretty amazing. All the parents were. Well, Dave was just such a bohemian. He just loved food and he loved wine. He just loved life. He just loved living. I learned everything I know from Dave. The best of what you get in wine can be obtained purely out of the original fruit without attempting to add to it or take anything away from it. And if you have the good grapes, there's nothing you can do to make them any better. You can only make them poorer. Dave Benyon heard me explain my approach to winemaking, which was traditional. And so he said, my God, here's a guy, not out of Davis, not, not a additive winemaker, somebody who would make wine the way they had been making it, but who knew more about it, had much more experience with it than they did. That's why they offered me the job. And those techniques are still the basis of winemaking here at Ridge.